What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle back here with part 3 of our React Native Redux tutorial. This is a tutorial where we go from scratch to finish. If you've missed the previous video, just check out the card over here in this top corner. And uh, what I want to do in this video is talk about setting up the store and the reducers. This is a new topic that we haven't really covered at all in any of our previous videos. So bear with me, it's quite a learning curve, but it will get us quite far. I'll show you how to set up our store and our reducers. Right, so here we are in our Visual Studio editor and we have got our full application here with all the boilerplate that we set up in the last video. One thing I wanna mention before I go on is please subscribe, hit this button over here if you haven't already and uh, leave a like in the video. And also another request, could you please tell me that you love these videos in the comments below? I like to hear that stuff. So I promise I'll try to reply to every single message that goes down there. Make my life difficult, please. Anyway, let's hit on. So what we made in our last video is I'm gonna close the screens and the modals and components here because we're going to be focusing on the store and the reducers. The first thing I wanna do is create our store. Now, the reason we have a store is this is what basically stores our application state. So before we can start using this store, store is part of Redux. So remember the last time I told you to check out that NPM install? I'm here in my document slash YouTube slash Kappa keys where I've kept my folder. This whole folder is here and I wanna install a new node module. So I'm gonna npm install dash dash save and we're going to save Redux. Now that is a really cool package that lets us do this whole application state thing that I've been talking about all this time. It's gonna be amazing once it's up and running because it really organizes your code nicely and makes you stress a lot less about all the managing states of mong components and things so once that's done we're going to be able to import something called create store and this is just a method from redux now eslint is gonna as usual freak out a little bit because that's not done yet. oh wait it might be done already nope it's not done yet i don't know why eslint's not shouting at me yet i've got this all set up yep anyway let's head back into here maybe it will shout at me later oh there we go now it's just tuning me for not using it yet. Ah, finally things are working. So another thing we're going to do is we're going to import reducers from our reducers folder, which there's nothing there yet. But if we say from reducers, just the folder without setting a specific file, what it will do is it will look for the index file inside the reducers. So this will actually be reducers that is exported from this index file here in reducers. I'll talk about that later as we create our reducers. But the next thing we wanna do is create a store. And that's a constant variable that we're going to make. Um, we'll, st we'll store store. And store is going to be create store. And we will store our reducers inside that create store. And then we just simply export default store. Now we're going to implement this later in our application over here. I'll show you that at the end of the video. The next thing we need to do is go actually create some reducers. So in my reducers file, the index file, we're going to import another thing from Redux called combine reducers. Because we're gonna have multiple reducers over time. I mean, I'll start off by only implementing one, but we're going to have combine reducers from Redux. Let's just check how this is going. I'm still busy loading up. What we're going to do is get combine reducers from Redux because we'll be using that lowdown. And I've created that keys reducer. So I want to import keys from dot slash keys reducer. And this refers to this file over here, which we haven't put anything in yet either, but I'm working from the top down. So the next thing we want to do is just export default combine reducers. So this becomes like your full list of reducers. And we just put in keys for now. So if we have another reducer, let's say one called for the modal example, we'll have import modal from modal reducer and we will add in modal over here, if I could spell it right. But I haven't created modal yet, so I'll worry about that later. So I've just set this up so that we can expect multiple reducers. And this combined reducers that gets exported over here is stored in the create store. So you create a store with all your reducers. 
Now this is still loading up, so we will see that happen later. Next thing we want to do is create our keys reducers or our keys reducer. And this, what I want in here is if we go back to looking at our application, here's our application over here. We have these different keys that we have to worry about, like basically C, that's C sharp or D flat, and then D and then D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp, G flat, G, all the way up until B and then we'll go around to C again. We need to store each and every one of these keys into reducer because we're going to be using this. It's going to be, we reuse it all the time. So I'd like to have it all stored in my application state because it's used in here, it's used up here, and it's used down here. It's also used inside our view transport pose chords section over here. So that's a very, like all of these keys, I want to not have to reuse them in every component. So I'm going to keep them stored in my application state. And the way I'm going to do that is by keeping them in the keys reducer. Now, what I want to do is I need to import, and this is me again, working from stuff I haven't created yet, import data from something that I'm going to create called the key list. So what we basically are going to have is we're going to have a list of keys and we're going to store that in a JSON file. So this could be stored like online somewhere or whatever, but we're going to store it locally in our file. So this is a really cool thing you could learn from React because, well, in general, it's just great to be able to store a list of data inside your application if you know it's not going to be needed to change or anything like that. Or you could even change it if you're able to build some system in there. But this is going to be a static list of data. And we're just going to export default if I could spell default correctly, the data. And that's as simple as this gets, is this keys reducer is gonna send you back some data, which is gonna consist of an array of the different keys. And they're gonna be key objects because if you look into our application, I want to have the full keys over here. So I wanna have E here and also G sharp slash A flat, that's gonna be a key on its own. But then I've also, to represent it, I want to have the short thing. So I want to represent that it is a short key. If it is a short key, which means this, full on key, I want to shorten it. Then we'll just have a slash. So that would show it to be true or false. And if it's not existent, it just means it's false. So bear that in mind as we make our key list. So I'm going to put the key list in reduces as well, because we're just using it straight from there. And that's going to be a new file. And we're going to call this key list dot json so be sure to call this a dot json otherwise it won't work because we're storing this as a json file instead of js i've often had problems where i make this whole key list thing and i said dot js and i have this issue so as i said it's going to be an array of keys so example let's start at c our first object is going to be c and we're going to have a key and the key is going to be c simple enough now the next one's a bit complicated because after C we have, it's either C sharp or D flat. So I'm going to have this key over here and it's going to be C sharp or D flat. And then another thing we want to mention that this is a short key. And yes, we want to set that as true. And you know, you can repeat the whole process and go down to here and say D and D is not a short key, so we don't have to add that in there and go on, on and on and on and on and on. But the cool thing is I have copied all this stuff in. And another thing I want to mention is, look here, this is C sharp slash D flat, which is just, I use the small B there, but there's actually some proper characters to use there. It's that C sharp and this D flat. So I'm not going to go try and remember what the key codes were for those. Instead, I'm going to copy this whole list of what I've made here, which is everything. So we have it all the way from C down to B. And as I mentioned, there's nothing between B and C. And there's also nothing between E and F. So that's just some music theory for you. Uh, you can get this list from my, if you remember from the previous video, I showed you the GitHub stuff. I'm going to link to this repository. It's going to be in repo three onwards. You'll see the key list.json data in the GitHub page. So you can get all that information from there. Uh, as I said, I'll put a link to that in the description below for you to find this. Moving on, let us check out what we need to do now. So now we've got this whole store over here and it looks like our package has been properly installed, our Redux package. So this is all working. 
and we have our so our store contains our created store with reducers the reducers are the combined reducers which currently just has the keys reducer and then the keys saved are this keys reducer which looks at the data that we had the key list so it's a whole strange string of things going on here but we basically have this key list and it's stored into our application state thanks to this now creating the store is pretty much a once-off thing so don't stress too much about that and the other thing i wanted to mention was that as you create more and more reducers you'll understand that this gets a lot easier over time so don't stress too much by the end of the tutorial this should be fresh in your mind on how to do Another thing I forgot to do was save all my files, so that could lead to some great major issues. Uh, nothing else needs to be saved. What I want to finally do is actually implement our store. And the way you implement a store is we actually need to import another file called npm install. Well, it's not called npm install, it's called react redux. So this is where you want to implement your redux stuff that you've all set up here to mix with react so as we wait for that to go on i want to say import provider from react redux now that should that will get all implemented later when things are sorted um what i want to do here is take this full returned render here and store it inside a provider tag so we have provider, that's supposed to be a capital P. And we close the tag off. So everything is stored with inside the provider. This is going to be the root thing because we want to store it in our application root. That's our application state. Now we also have to assign a store to the provider. So that's just a parameter to provider called store. And that takes in store. And the store is referring to the store which we created, which I still need to import. We'll import store from dot slash store and where is this dot slash store stored it is <laughs> funny twist of words there it is this store over here it refers to this folder and because there's no it's a folder it will look at the index file and this will be the store that we are looking at so if we run our application in expo here i've got expo all set up i can run this on my device which might take a while so bear a second Okay, I forgot to mention that, well, here I am, my Redux is successfully installed. Whenever you add new node modules to your project, you need to restart the project before you can continue. So I will be right back when this is restarted and my application is up and running on my phone. Okay, so while the application is loading up, I wanted to mention that what we should expect from this application is just the simple open up app.js to start working your app. So nothing in our original view is actually going to change here. The only thing that will be changing is the fact that on the back end, what you can't really see is we have an application state being stored here, provided by the provider, so well named there, and the provider is providing a store, which is our store that we have stored, the application state inside. And currently that store is holding this list of data over here. Now, obviously we can work out some really cool things with reducers later on, which will show you how to change application states and how that all works. Basically, the thing you need to understand about Redux is whenever the application state changes, that whole application state gets re-rendered. So you only want to use it when you are focused on using it over multiple components to make your code much easier to read. If you can keep your state to one component and only want it to stay there, then keep using traditional React component states. So let's head back over to our project. And there we have it, our application is completed. Now, the important thing is here that you can also get your application up and running without any errors. Because if there are errors, it means you've set up your store or provider or reduces incorrectly somehow. So it's very important that you get that up and running. But as usual, if you don't get it up and running, you can go check out the source code on my GitHub project, which I have linked in the description below. Anyway, guys, that's going to cut it for this video. In the next video, we will tackle building that header thing in our main screen. So that's gonna be different to the way we've done it in our previous videos, the one where I showed you the YouTube search tutorial. But that said, we will tackle that in the next video. Please leave a like and subscribe and comment below saying how much you love this and I will try my best to reply to everything you comment. Anyway guys, keep well and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.